I just wanted to thank you all for um, this opportunity to chat with you. I'm beyond thrilled to um, be taking over the helm of the Badger Women's Basketball Program. Um, you know, this was a from the time I just started even thinking about coming to Madison and starting to research. And, um, you know, then I started talking with the people. Um, it's just really been a whirlwind as you can imagine, but it's also been really um, exciting and I'm inspired to, to get started and to really uh, set this program in the right direction. So I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, I mean, I know Shaka might've been a better draw, but you know what, a girl can dream. So um, thank you so much and uh, looking forward to, uh, to meeting you all in person. Okay, hey, first question from Jeff Patricus. Yeah, Marissa, obviously you came as an assistant for nine Where years. Where are you from, you Jeff? I'm sorry, Diane. It's been a while, <laughs> long day. Jeff Patricus from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Um, obviously, nine years at UConn, there's an established standard there. You go to take on the challenge at your alma mater. After three years, you decide to take on this challenge. What Obviously, Wisconsin has struggled the last 10 years in terms of getting to the NC2As. What intrigued you about the challenge and what factors led you to believe that it was a challenge or a risk worth taking? No, I think that's a great question. Um, so first of all, I think for me, I don't think I've ever done anything that was like super easy. Um, people might say, you know, going to UConn was, a, it was an easy decision, but working there um, oftentimes on the outside looking in, people think it's just the kids just, you just roll out the ball and it just happens, but it's actually um, a really, they, they put an incredible amount of work in as coaches, we put an incredible amount of work in and, um, and we're really dedicated to the craft. And so I think that prepared me to take on uh, my alma mater and try to turn that around. And so when I saw this opportunity here, I really wasn't, um, what intrigued me, I guess, was that every sport it felt, I felt like besides women's basketball and, um, and Madison had done well and was doing well, you know, and I think um, shortly thereafter of uh, even kind of like beginning to talk women's ice hockey won national championship. I was like, no pressure. Um, and so, um, you know, I've seen what the men have done over the years. And when I got on campus and saw the, you know, the actual resources within the buildings, but then talked about the different um, programming that we had here with Forward 360 and um, a lot of the other things that are here and kind of in support spaces, I really um, thought uh, you know what, it's it's possible. And I, I feel confident that with my ability to connect with people and um, and get pe keep people excited about Wisconsin again, because that's the other thing, having worked in Minnesota, I know what it's like with the affinity for a place. Um, you know, when you have these college challenges and people grow up and it's, it, you know, everything is Wisconsin and they want to be a Badger. And so we just have to kind of connect with those, those folks from a young age and get them to understand, hey, we're going to do something special here and we want you to be a part of it. Uh, George? George Belecki, NBC 15. Coach, congrats on the new job. Um, kind of touch on it, what attracted you to this job. Can you kind of take us through the timeline? Did you approach UW? Did they approach you? When did the discussions interview process um, start for you? And then also on top of that, for you, you said you'll get to Madison on Wednesday. Obviously, it's really fast movement, but what's kind of your first order of business to start building the blocks here in Madison? Yeah, so as far as the timeline, um, you know, I, I was contacted. Um, we we lost on Sunday the 15th um, and I was contacted on that Monday. Um, as you can imagine, I was still licking my wounds and doing a little stress cleaning um, and, um, you know, got the call that there was potentially some interest. And, um, and from there, I got on a Zoom the next day, um, just kind of an initial um, contact and then um, a more formal Zoom. And then on um, Tuesday of last week, um, flew out um, and interviewed on Wednesday. And, um, and then kind of, you know, the rest is, as they say, history. So um, really, it's been a, um, like you said, a whirlwind, but it's been really f fantastic. Um, as far as um, kind of what the what the first steps are, initial steps are, um, I, I think, I needed to meet my team. Um, and obviously over Zoom, that's not um, the most <laughs> intimate way to meet people, but I mean, we've all been doing it for a year and 
we're now best friends, obviously we've spent the last 10 minutes together. So, um, but no, I think that it's, um, it was really imperative that I got in front of uh, the players that I spoke with incoming recruits. Um, and then that I really started to establish relationships with people in the department that are going to also be a part of making or breaking our success. And um, I know that this is not something that I will do um, on my own. And so I want to make sure that um, everyone understood, you know, I understand the collaboration, um, you know, it's teamwork makes the dream work, as people say, but I also think that, um, you know, I want them to know who I am as a person because we're all going to be recruiting for Wisconsin. And so if you know who I am, then you can feel really comfortable, you know, speaking on, uh, you know, about me and, and things of that nature, if, if anyone ever stopped and, and spoke to you. So that's kind of the first order business, um, really kind of solidifying those relationships with the players. That's really, for me, kind of paramount to our success. Jim Polzine. Jim Polzine from Wisconsin State Journal. Marissa, we spoke on Friday. Good to, we're old friends now, so good to talk to you again. Um, you had mentioned something the other day about, you know, keeping in-state talent and, and how important that was. Obviously, you know, the phrase around here that gets used a lot is build a wall around Wisconsin. Um, it, it, this program's had trouble doing that over the years. What's that process look like for you in terms of establishing those relationships with with student athletes and also coaches and, and people kind of that are important in that area? Yeah, um, I, I think we should maybe change that phrase, building walls, <laughs> negative connotation, but <laughs> but I see where you're going with that. Um, but yeah, no, um, I think uh, for me, keeping, you know, kind of the Wisconsin talent in state starts with high school coaches, starts with camps and, you know, um, really identifying um, talent, but also um, cultivating relationships from a young age. Um, I think it's also building trust with the community um, and them understanding kind of, again, who I am, who my staff is and kind of who we are as people so that they feel connected and they, they, they're committed to what we're building. Um, I think it's, you know, being transparent that you're not going to be an overnight success story, but that um, there is going to, it's going to take some time to get this done, but that, um, you know, to kind of be invested in, in that process with us. Um, and I think in ultimately, ultimately it's going to be about making relationships with the best players and them feeling like, you know what, I want to come and I want to represent my, you know, hometown school. And I want to be able to do something that hasn't been done for a while. Cause you know, it's really easy. Um, a lot of times for people to just kind of jump on something that's already been going, um, but it's a, it's kind of cool to be able to leave a legacy um, at a place that you haven't, uh, that hasn't had it for a while and, and really make a name, not only for yourself, but even more bring, bring even more, you know, kind of um, attention or, or respect to, to a place that is so revered by so many people. Calvin. Hey coach, I'm Calvin Wetzel with Her Hoop Stats. Uh, so I have a little bit of a statsy question, I guess. What what role will analytics play, if any, in, in this program and the way that you coach this team? That's so funny. I just had an, uh, an, another conversation about this. I am um, I got an A in statistics here at BU, um, humble brag, um, but I stink at math. So, um, and I am much more of a coach who coaches by feel than numbers. Um, and so I think you know, I use the stats to point out to my players, hey, uh, the numbers don't lie. So here's, you're not shooting good percentage and we need you to not shoot threes right now. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, that's not something that I really kind of um, gravitated towards. I'm not opposed to it, but I really think that the way that I've kind of um, crafted the, my, my coaching philosophy is, is definitely more on feel and what, what I see players doing. And then, and then hopefully the numbers bear that out, but, but not too much with the analytics. Jacko? Break your heart. That's <laughs> good. Hi coach, Mike Jocks, NBC 15. Congratulations. We're, uh, we're excited to have you here. Uh, two questions, quick questions though. Um, what's the thing you're most excited about coming to Madison and what kind of coach will we see on the sidelines? Is that going to be somebody that's uh, up and we talked a little bit about the referees already, but are you somebody that's, you know, going back and forth on the sidelines, getting in people's faces a little bit? Um, just, just wonder what we'll see. Okay. Um, most excited. Um, 
outside of, you know, obviously coming and, and working at the university, I love the water. So I just can't wait to experience Madison in the summer and kind of get a feel for my new home and, um, and, and meet people in the area. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> kind of, well, if you look at anything online, you'll see that, um, you would not look at me as like a Brad Stevens, for example. I um, I definitely am a little bit more spirited, if you will, um, passionate. Um, I I like to have conversations with the referees and really just kind of show them, um, you know, what it is that I feel like they could do potentially better. Um, I've never gotten a technical foul in my three years of being a head coach, um, nor have I gotten a technical assistant, which could happen. Um, and so I think um, the questions I ask are usually warranted. Um, the tone I use has been helpful, uh, with the mask and, um, you know, no, I, 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 um, you know, I, I love to, um, I wear high heels at most of my games and I also will run in them down the sideline. If I feel like, you know, my kids need to really push the ball or get in a defensive stance. So that's kind of what you'll see. So hopefully, um, you know, the, uh, the subdued, potentially some sub, somewhat subdued folks of, of the Midwest will be okay with my 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 northeast uh new england kind of uh spirit steve ap steve are you there yes there i had trust time with the mute button steve mcgargy associated press so i apologize i came in a little late but i was just wondering first if you could share the biggest things you learned at UConn that have helped you as a head coach and also just what you think are reasonable expectations here at Wisconsin in the short term and the long term. Yeah, for sure. So lessons learned at UConn, um, first and foremost was just the culture, um, how, how critical that was the getting the right type of people. Um, you know, you're going to have a certain level of talent, obviously that can play at that level, but they have to be really good people who are selfless and who are bought into something bigger than themselves. Um, also learn just how, you know, important it was to, um, work extremely hard as, uh, and, and have the players kind of get yeah, coach Ariam had a phrase. We don't do it till we get it right. We do it till we can't get it wrong. And I think that that's like something I really took away that, you know, we don't just move on from something because the clock ran out. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we've gotten better at it and every single day we get better. Um, and it's funny when I, on my interview, I, I spoke with Greg Gard and, and I know they do a lot of stuff with fundamentals and that's something else that we're really key on. I mean, a lot of people would come to practice and they thought there was some kind of secret sauce <laughs> in the way that, that it happened. But really it was just about making sure we, we got better at the, the small things because then the small things turned into big things. Um, as far as kind of um, projections, um, I don't want to box myself in there because then I'm sure that, you know, you'll come back and be like Associated Press said, um, but not that you would do that, Steve, but like I've heard other people, you know what I mean? Um, but um, no, I think um, for me, I, I want to um, take the program in a positive direction. I want to, you know, put one foot in front of the other each day. And I really do think that we can be successful here. I don't think that the cupboard is bare with what we have right now. Um, you know, I told my team this and I will tell them again when we're in person, they're my team. You know, a lot of times people think that, oh, well, wait till you get your own players in here. Those are my players. And, you know, we're going to build something special this year with what we have. And then we're going to continue to build because that's how you build a winning culture. And so um, if we can establish a really great foundation this year and do things the right way and play really hard and do things till we get it right, not till we get it, you know, do, do it, excuse me, till we can't get it wrong, then I think we have a good chance of, of uh, you know, taking a step in the right direction. Lance? Hi, Marissa. Lance Beezer from 27 News here in Madison. You mentioned some of the positive aspects that UW has as building blocks for you to build upon. But in order to kind of fix this thing, what are the rooms, areas with room for growth that you really saw that you feel like you need to attack right away? Yeah, I mean, I think like anything else, um, you can't have success without trust. And so for me coming in new, we've got to establish trust. The, the players have to trust me. Um, they have to trust my staff. Um, they have to trust the vision that we have for the program. 
Um, just like the administration had to trust me when I came in and interviewed. So I think that it, first and foremost, it's got to be built on that trust. Um, and then I think it's also about kind of doing things, um, you know, the Wisconsin way, right? So for, for me, that's making sure that we work harder than everybody else, that we work smarter than everyone else, you know, but that at the same time that we have a, a great time while we're doing it, because ultimately we are playing a game. So this should be enjoyable, um, but we're going to learn life lessons along the way. And I want to make sure that, you know, when they leave here, they're not just better basketball players, but they're better people. Let's go, Charles. Welcome back to, to, to the Big Ten, Melissa. How are you? Charles, what's going on? Good. We haven't seen each other since Indianapolis when you was there. No, it's been a while. I have a, just a non-basketball question, so to speak. Um, you are the seventh black female head coach in the Power Five conferences and the second and the second one in the Big Ten. How important to you as black women in the profession that coaching is should be the first. How, 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 say that last part again. How, how important you see coaching diversity, especially for okay. black women. The yes, no, gotcha. Um, no, I, you know, I, I um, am a proud black woman um, and really um, appreciative to be able to kind of be um, a role model for other young black female coaches and um, players. Um, and at the same time, I, I, I want to, you know, I've always been really cognizant of the fact that I, I have earned the jobs that I have because of my competency and because of my capabilities. And then also I happen to be a black female. Um, I think that, you know, in a, in a role like this, um, I have an opportunity to show that, you know, we are capable of leading a, a power five program and that um, it can be successful and, and that other black women should get the opportunity to do that as well. Um, that it shouldn't be a one-off, but def definitely something that, um, you know, that, that we're afforded that opportunity more oftentimes than not. And we talk a lot about, you know, being in the room um, when it happens. It's a little Hamilton uh, reference for you all. Um, but, um, but, you know, but also having a seat at the table and, 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 you know, and if you don't bring your own chair. And so I'm really, um, you know, I feel really fortunate for this opportunity to kind of have this platform to not only, you know, try to win games, but also um, more, more than that, um, show that there's, you know, there's diversity of thought, there's diversity of, 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 you know, opportunity and, and that we can do so much more than just, you know, teach kids this, this, you know, game with a round ball. You was asked, uh, what you learned at UConn, some of the things that you learned from your days in Minnesota that helped you become a good coach. Um, one, I learned that um, I don't like having the bench below the court uh, because I can't wear a skirt. Uh, no, but I, um, no, I, I learned um, so much from Pam and just, you know, that was my first kind of soiree into power five um, basketball. Um, and it really, you know, the player development component was, was huge. I had a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with the, the post players down there. Um, and also just kind of to see the, the level of um, investment from the fans. I think that that was so cool. I mean, on a, any given night, you had eight or 9,000 fans and the barn was rocking. And so um, I know it's possible to have that type of environment and, and even more um, if, you do, if you do it right. Congratulations. Look forward to seeing you this fall. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. Same. Brian Posick. Hi, Marissa. Brian Posick at WIBA Radio here in town. Um, you were talking about uh, Williams Arena rocking with eight or 9,000, and uh, you had done your, uh, looked into the history of this program. There was a point in time where there were Nine, ten, eleven thousand rock in the old field house and the coal center too for Wisconsin women's basketball. Do you think that's a possibility again? Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, anything's possible, right? I mean, you cut your hair. So like, what are we talking about? No, but um, <laughs> zinga, zinga, we're all friends. Come on. Um, I'll be here all year. Um, but um, no, I, um, I definitely think it's a possibility. I think that's one of the things I really 
um, am most excited about. And, you know, being in a, in a market like Boston, you know, there's a 250,000 college students in Boston. There's several different, you know, universities and a lot of affinity for, you know, different pockets, depending on where you went to school. And so I think when you come to a place like Wisconsin, I'm really excited about like just being able to immerse myself in the community and get people excited. And I know that they support, you know, and I know that they want to support and people like winners, but people also like people. Right. And so I think that that's got to be the combination then. And we kind of strike that balance of, Hey, we have to get you invested in us first and the wins are going to come. I ask a follow-up to that too. Can I we, can, I go ahead, Brian. You, there's a there's a fantastic young woman that uh, played the last three years at the University of Wisconsin and entered the transfer portal, Imani Lewis. Have you reached out to her by chance? I have reached out to her. Can you tell us anything? <laughs> any, any chance, another follow-up. Any, any chance she'll remain a Badger, Marissa? Um, you know, I think that, you know, I want to respect um, Amani and the conversation that we had. And, um, you know, I, I think she's ultimately going to have to make, you know, her decision. So I would definitely tell you to hit up Amani and talk to her <laughs> about that. Um, CBS 58. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, CBS 58. Yep. Yeah, video and audio, right? <laughs> you think after a year we get this thing down. Okay. Uh, Kevin Holden, CBS 58 in Milwaukee. Uh, just a little follow-up to, to the question from, from Charles. Uh, you, one of the things that you've done during your coaching career uh, is to, to help with some, of, some committees like uh, the Patriot League's Anti-Racism Commission, University of Connecticut's uh, Diversity Council. How important has that role been in your development as a person and a coach, and how excited are you to continue that in this chapter? Yeah, no, um, it's been huge. I mean, I think, um, you know, my parents are, uh, my mom is white, my dad's black. I've always had um, kind of a, a mixed perspective coming um, coming up in this world and been really, um, really invested in, in fairness and equality and social justice. And so it, it's not kind of that un, uncharacteristic for me to have gotten involved in those, um, those avenues. And especially in light of the events of this past summer, um, you know, and I think it's kind of ironic that you know, today is the, the start of the trial for um, the murder of George Floyd. And so um, I'm just really, um, I feel really fortunate that I've been able to use this platform in addition to coaching, you know, basketball and doing something that I love to also be able to bring light to um, some really important issues and to really affect, um, you know, tangible change. That's kind of been the whole, the whole, you know, cornerstone of what I wanted to do. It, it wasn't just about, you know, having conversations, but how can we kind of turn those conversations into action? And I'm really fired up about um, the Big Ten Anti-Racism um, Commission and hoping to be able to become a member of that. Um, I actually had gotten a call today from Kevin Warren, the commissioner and so introducing himself that was really cool and um he was really supportive and said you know here to to help and love to have you be a part of it um and so yeah i think that those things are inspiring i also think that you know the strategic plan that wisconsin has laid out that was something that also attracted me to the job um that you know it wasn't just something that was kind of in talk but that they had actually put it out on paper and were working towards um you know kind of again putting it into practice and so um, all of those things um, I'm really looking forward to, you know, getting to be a part of. Um, but obviously, first and foremost, I've got to coach my team. And um, but, you know, there's 24 hours in a day. So let's let's do this thing. Jeff, do you have still a follow up? Yes. Uh, Jeff Patrikas from the Journal Sentinel. Again, you mentioned when you talk to recruits about trying to say to them, look, you can get onto something that we're building and, and create a legacy. But that's a tough ask for kids who have seen the program struggle. I'm just curious, how do you get them to trust or what would you sell about yourself to get them to trust you, whether it's your record as an assistant at UConn, what you did at BU, your plans for UW? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question, Jeff. I think, you know, first of all, when I say legacy, um, I really define it as kind of leaving a place better than you found it. And so for me, I would say that 
that's that's kind of what I tried to do here at, at BU. I, I wasn't um, looking to to leave BU. It, it is my alma mater. I love it. And at the same time, this Wisconsin opportunity, um, just the the timing. It, you know, you 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 can't pick the timing, right? You know, you know, man plans and God laughs. And so, um, you know, I'm really you know appreciative um, that I was able to leave BU in a better place than I found it. And I think that I can tell them like I'm a living example of that. That's something that you can do. And especially, and I'm from Massachusetts, so I stayed home and I was able to do that. Um, and so I think that in addition to the fact that, you know, depending on what it is you want to accomplish, I've also coached pros and I've coached Olympians and I've seen what it takes from, you know, the start to, to kind of through their career from freshman year through senior year to help them continue to, to get better and grow. And um, so I think all those things, hopefully they'll see, you know, I have a track record and I'm not just kind of, um, you know, just kind of blowing smoke. George, do you have a follow-up? Yep, uh, Mar Marissa, first I got a text from Bobby Mullen from your UConn days. Oh, Bobby! He said he helped you out dry. Oh my God, I love Bobby! <laughs> I worked for him at Seton Hall when he was at SID there. He's with the Big East now, of course. He, but he says hi, he says that. congratulations. Thank you. I love it. He really is. I said, hey, Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. It's a Bobby Mullen fan club now. Um, and, and for you, you touched on, you know, how much of analytics you put into the game. You've touched on what type of coach you are. Um, do you have a staff in place there, an idea of it, of who will be on your staff here in Madison um, as much as you can? Yeah, no, um, you know, right now, obviously, um, it's just we just posted, I think, the jobs um, this past weekend maybe. Um, and so we're, you know, I'm still looking at resumes and still trying to figure it out um, and, and build the best stuff that I possibly can. Um, but I, I know that this is such a special place. So I know there'll be a lot of people interested in, um, you know, joining me and I'm a special person. So I feel like that's, no, just kidding. Um, no. So I, I think, um, no, I, I'm really excited about putting together, uh, you know, a strong staff because again, keeping players in the state, um, building the wall, if you will, um, and just really, um, you know, making sure that there's connections there. I do have a lot of connections still from my times at Minnesota, um, but, you know, it can't hurt to have someone, you know, or, or some, some ones that um, also are, are connected in that way as well. Any other questions? All right. I don't what George, one more. All right, so you, you did touch on it uh, twice prior, but if you go back to September, right here on Madison, there was Unity and Diversity March led by multiple Black student athletes here at Wisconsin. Have you been in touch with the student athletes that led that march or in the forefront um, in that at all? And, you know, what are your plans? I mean, not to put too much on your shoulders. You haven't even started coaching yet, but to bring that and, and to move forward that movement here in Madison. Um, yeah, to answer your first question, no, I, I have not, um, but I, I do intend to kind of be able to make connections within the campus community um, and the community at large. I, I think that's important. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have any intention of kind of shying away from it and kind of siloing myself in the Cole Center. Um, and at the same time, I, I want to be really cognizant of the fact that um, this is really important work, but it is also really intense work. And so is building a, a winning program and tradition. And so um, I want to be able to strike that balance and, and be able to show my players the, my commitment to them first and foremost, and then also be able to show my commitment to the community and um, the students at large.